Hey Flosstube, I'm Teresa and welcome to Creative Whim Studio. As always, I like to start my Floss 2 videos out saying thank you so much for all your comments, for your subscribe subscriptions to my channel, and I read all of your comments. So far, I have been able to answer all of the comments as they come in for like the current video. If you comment on something super far back, I may miss that. Okay, super far back. I've only had three videos, but to me, I'm just like reading the ones that come up for that current week and responding to those. So uh, thank you so much. I just, it's overwhelming. I cannot believe I'm over 700 subscribers. I have more subscribers on this channel than my other channel. Of course, I'm not real active on my other channel, but I've had that one for years. And it's mostly just speed painting videos. I give artist tips and things like that, which I haven't done one of those videos in a long time. However, um, I just thank you. Thank you so much. I'm blown away at the response and I'm just grateful. So thanks. And keep commenting, keep asking questions and I'll do my best to answer everything. Last week's giveaway was a punch needle pattern. Um, Let Freedom Ring number 150. And the winner for that punch needle pattern is Pat Patricia Connors. So thank you, Patricia. Patricia, I can't even say your name. Patricia, it's not that hard, Teresa. I can do it. So if you could just please give me your email or your mailing address, I will get this out to you as soon as possible. Probably not till after Christmas. Um, but anyways, I will get that in the mail. My email is in the description box below. So I might as well just go ahead and tell you what this week's giveaway is. This week is going to be a cross stitch pattern and it's called Winter Blessings Cross Stitch 338. So in order to get in on that drawing, the question, the question is, <laughs> what is your favorite Christmas movie? There's so many good ones, but the ones that I watch that I have not missed a Christmas, I didn't even know how long, but I watch them every single Christmas with my husband and my friends, <laughs> is The Grinch, which I watched the one with, um, oh my gosh, I just totally lost his name. The funny actor, come on, Teresa. Anyway, The Grinch, not the cartoon one, but the, the movie one. And then I watch uh, A Christmas Story, gotta watch that. Also, Christmas Vacation. Now, Christmas Vacation th this year, well, it's kind of an ongoing thing now for the past few years that my girlfriends and I get together and watch that. And then this year, uh, my husband, one of my girlfriends, her husband came over and so the, my husband and, and him and then four of us girls watched that together and it, that's just priceless. Those are the like the mainstays. I also love Christmas with the Cranks. Oh God, there's more. I don't know. I'm just kind of drawing a blank right now. But anyway, I would love to know what your favorites are. I know people love Polar Express and I, I have never watched that whole movie. It's like, I don't know if <clears throat> it doesn't grasp my attention or why I've never finished watching that movie, but I'm going to give it a shot again this year. So anyway, just let me know your favorite Christmas movie because I'm hoping maybe I'll find new ones this way. Okay, after the giveaway. Oh, questions and answers. Okay, I only had a qu couple questions this week. And the first one is from Kay Hayes 9591 and she asked if my studio was a big shed a big old she shed <laughs> um no it's not a shed it's actually a pole barn and if you don't know what a pole barn is it's probably easier to look it up google it than for me to explain it because I would probably say it wrong so just check it out but it's it's 
when we purchased this property, this this house, and when we were shopping for a house, when we were house hunting, I one of the main things that we wanted was a pole barn on the property that we can convert into my studio. So that was huge for us. We also wanted some land. We didn't want to necessarily be in a neighborhood. We like privacy and and we like the woods and you know we wanted to be able to go on walks in the woods and so we had some things in mind that we really wanted. And my husband and I when before he went back to doing uh sheet metal and he worked at home as well we would go work out in the morning together at the athletic club and play racquetball until we almost killed each other i mean it was nuts we were both very competitive <laughs> sometimes i would like we would end up mad at each other it was mostly me i'll admit but anyways we when we would get done working out we would go driving around we didn't have a realtor we just would go driving around in the area that we wanted to live and you know if there was any houses for sale, you know, we'd follow the sign and check out the house. Well, that's what happened. That's how we found this place. We we're driving home and we see a house for sale down this muddy old road because it was a springtime. I don't know that it was muddy, but it's muddy right now. So that's kind of why I was saying that. But and and it went and it, we were turning down this dead end road. And I'm thinking there's not going to be anything back here. Are you kidding me? And this was like I want to say. It was May because we actually moved in in June. So it was May and we pulled up into the driveway and the house is modest. I mean, it's it's not a big house by any stretch of the imagination. It's a rather small house. I don't, I don't worry about that. You can always add on. You know, I wasn't worried about the house as long as it was structurally sound. But we pulled up into the driveway and you could kind of pull up next to the garage and see out the five acres and it was lush and green and gorgeous. It looked like park property. It was, or like a golf course. It was just beautiful and green and the pond was full. And then we saw the pole barn and there's like pine trees in front of the pole barn. I mean, we just were like, wow, this place is amazing. So we, we kind of bought it because of the property because <laughs> you can always remodel whatever, you know, because when we, when we did look at the house, I love the house. I love the layout of the house. It's a little bit on the small side, but I love the layout of it. It had a walkout basement and I love a walkout basement because it makes your basement way more functional. It had a, you know, a full bathroom downstairs and it wasn't quite finished. It had like indoor outdoor carpeting and it, it wasn't, you know, um, livable, I guess you could say. The upstairs had like mauve or pink. One of the walls was pink. It had pink countertops and backs. It was like, uh, and I didn't like the paint colors, but whatever, you know, you can change all that, which we did. So anyway, I, where was I going with this? Oh, the barn, you know, the barn was just walls insulated though. At least it was insulated cement floor. I mean, just your basic barn. And it was pretty much empty, obviously, because the people that were selling the house had already moved out. So it was empty, but it had electricity run to it already. And I mean, it was prime. I'm trying to think how big it is. I want to say, I don't even know. I want to say 30 feet by 40 feet. That's probably too small. I don't know. But basically, I drew up plans. It was my most exciting thing that I, well, I shouldn't say the most exciting thing I've had in my business, but it was pretty exciting that I got to lay it out exactly like I wanted it. And I just took graph paper and, you know, every little square was a foot and I, I laid out how I wanted the cabinets and everything. And and um, anyway, so, and we only, only half of the barn is my studio. The other half is storage. And it's storing a lot of things that we really need to get rid of. It was things from our old business, Primitive Folk. And then we had a little gift shop at one time. So there's just stuff over that we've donated a ton of stuff. Uh, we still have a lot of frames left. And we just, we need to get rid of this these things. Because I would like to make that more functional over there. Uh, a place to, you know, my husband, he, he, he needs a place to work. So anyway, but this side is finished. It has a full kitchen. And it has a full bath. And the reason we did that is because 
And, and all of the walls are like half walls and they're not attached, they're, they're movable. So that we, because we thought, well, you never know when you might need, I hate the term mother-in-law apartment. I don't like that because I don't know why. It just doesn't sound good to me. But you never know when someone might have, in your family might have failing health and need you need to be near them or whatever. And so we wanted to make it so that, and, and also for resale, we thought, you know, if we ever did sell this place, this could be considered an apartment, possibly. I didn't know. But anyway. So yeah, we basically like when we have Thanksgiving, we cook the ham down here at the studio because I don't have room in my oven for the turkey and the ham. But when the kids were younger, the pond, we would have a blast in that pond. And so we wanted to shower because we didn't want them tracking that into the house. So there's a you know, shower and then we would have cookouts and I could cook in here and bring it out. You know, he would cook on the grill and then I might have something on the stove top in here. And it was just easier because the house is quite a ways up. Anyway, that's what it is. And someone asked for a studio tour and I will do that someday. But I'm telling you what, it is a huge mess right now. And, and, and doing the floss tube doesn't help because I get all this stuff ready. And then I'm usually by the time I'm done filming, filming I'm like, okay, I'm done. And I just leave everything where it's at. And then for the next floss tube, I go, oh my gosh, I got to move all this stuff. And then I don't have time to put it away. So now I've got just piles of, it's a mess. Honest to God, I've got to do something about it. But anyway, so that was a really long answer to a very short question. My apologies. The second question was from Jacqueline Ray. Have you considered painting male angel warriors? And I have painted only one, but St. Michael, the archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. So there is my Saint Michael. I painted him, I don't know, two or three years ago. And he's on um, birch plywood that I had cut at the, lum the um, lumber yard. And so there's my St. Michael. I do sell prints of him. I think I have him up for sale too, the original. He's gorgeous. He's, there's a lot of crackle on um, his painting. And I painted it to look old. I actually looked at, you know, looked at up an old um, image of St. Michael and, and painted him in my own style. So yeah, I only have one, but um, I would love to do more of the saints, paint more of the saints, but um, you know, time, time is hard to come by these days. Uh, okay, so finishes. Yay! Okay, I'm not showing past finishes because that's taking up way too much time. <laughs> I, now these, these punch needle, um, designs are not new they're old but I didn't have them attached to anything so I this is uh what is this one pn 145 I believe and I think it's called bunnies and bunny and carrots or something like that but look at this I don't I bought this thing at an antique store I'm not even sure what the heck it was used for I really I don't know what it was used for but anyway I attached it with um, fabric glue and then that tin star was rusty and you couldn't even see it and I'm like well, why don't I just paint it black so I painted it black and then kind of rubbed the paint off so it's not super black is that cool or what that one and then I did this one this is uh, PN133 Daisy Hill and you may or may not recognize it it was called Cedar Hill in Park Designs line they made runners and chair pads and hooked rugs with this design and they did a really nice job so anyway so this this little punch needle before i attach it to this i had to send it to park designs and then they sent it off to india to have the rugs made and to match the color so it's well traveled that little one <laughs> All right, so that's my finishes. Works in progress. I kicked butt on Santa's garden is what I decided to name this. 
I don't know if you remember from last week, but I ended up, you know, I had to take the uh, staples out and reposition it so I could get the bottom part done. But I, I think I did, I don't know how much of the border I had done last time I did the floss tube video, but uh, I am right, I would have it done, but I ran out of tarragon. This green color on the background is called tarragon. Well, I ordered terrapin instead of tarragon. So, there you go. I mean, really, terrapin, tarragon, they sound alike. And I wasn't looking at the thread when I ordered it, and I ordered the wrong one, and I was a little irritated with myself. So, anyway, this will be done next week. That's my only work in progress for my needle arts business. I do have a haul. And I, it, I was Christmas. Oh, yeah. I didn't do life update. Just real quick. I know. I never do anything real quick, do I? But uh, so last Friday, I went out with my girlfriends. That was a blast, as always. Then Saturday night, we went out and saw our son play in his band. And uh, that was amazing. So much fun. Oh, my gosh. It's just I danced like almost every song. Well, second and third set. First set, nobody dances, it seems like. But anyway, so much fun. And some friends came out that we hadn't seen in a while and, and don't normally come to the gigs. So that was really fun. And then Sunday he brewed and I, I worked on my punch needle. <laughs> then um, this week, so I was going to go shopping Monday, remember? I said last week I got to finish my Christmas shopping. Well, I didn't go Monday because I had too many orders. And this time of year, you know, I know people are ordering Christmas gifts and I didn't want to even wait one day because it could be life or death <laughs> whether they get it for Christmas or not. So I just want to, when my orders come in this time of year, boom, the next day I get them out or the same day if possible. So I went Tuesday, which turned out to be a way better time to go because Monday night was a very difficult night for me because, well, let me back up. Normally what we do for Christmas is Christmas Eve, we have, my, at my mom's house, we'd have a huge breakfast, huge. I'm talking sausage, bacon, biscuits, gravy, scrambled eggs, fried potatoes, anything that you can imagine for breakfast we had it and it was amazing and then we would hang out all day open gifts play games uh we we my husband and i and the boys we would go off to church and then we would come back and then we would have like just she'd make that i don't know what the seven layer salad where it has the peas in it oh my gosh like a mayonnaise topping it's i love it i need to get that recipe because i haven't had it in a while but anyway uh, and, you know, just have like cheese and ham and make sandwiches or whatever, just something light. And then we would hang out and watch a movie or play more games. And it was so much fun. Well, my mom, uh, okay, four years ago on the 18th, which was Tuesday, my dad passed away. And it still feels like yesterday. And um, so it was really good for me to be out shopping because it just kept my mind occupied. And um, so... Since then, my mom just like actually just like a week or two ago sold the house that my my mom and dad built together, and then I was raised in, and it's just down the road five miles. But anyway, and she's spending the winters now in Florida because the winter she just doesn't like winter, and I don't blame her. She's down there where it's warm and beautiful, so <laughs> good for her. I'm happy. Uh, so basically. I was thinking, okay, well, this year, Christmas Eve is going to be really different because my mom's not here, so I'm not going to her house, blah, blah, blah. I can do it at my house. Well, then I find out that our daughter is working nine to five, and then our oldest son is, it's kind of a long story, and I'm not going to go into it because this is already too long. But anyway, he's driving a car to his friend down in Florida. His friend bought a, purchased a car up here in Michigan, but he lives in Florida. And he got a really, really good deal, so he's paying our son to drive it down to him. And then they're flying back here on Christmas Eve because his friend Tyler wants to spend time with his family, so he's flying up to see his family, so they're flying back here together. But it's, he doesn't get back until, I mean, it'll be like five before he's back in town. And anyway, so I was, I was a blubbering idiot 
on Monday night. I was cry I just cried so much <laughs> because Christmas Eve is not like it used to be. And I, you know, I'm not one that doesn't like change, but when it comes to not having that time with my family, that that is a bummer. That is a hard pill to swallow. So instead, my husband, God love him, he was trying to think of something to do on Christmas Eve that would be fun. So we are going to Bronner's or Frankenmuth is is like only maybe 30, 40 minutes from us. And if you haven't heard of Bronner's and Frankenmuth, you you should look it up on the internet. It's pretty cool. It's there's a it's a Christmas store and it's huge. It's the largest Christmas store probably in the world, I don't know, in the country. But it's huge and it's I mean just wall to ceiling, wall to ceiling, floor to ceiling Christmas things all year long. But I'll I'll just take some video when we go. But also they have great restaurants and all kinds of shopping down there. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to go out to lunch and then we're going to go see a movie. And the good part too is that Ryan said he would go with us because he's not working that day. So the three of us are going to spend the day together. And so I was telling Kyle about it and he said, well, mom, let's just make that the tradition from now on. He said, I obviously can't do it this year, but next year let's make that our tradition. So we'll see what happens. Well, and I told him, I said, it depends on how crazy Bronner says. Hopefully it's not too busy because I've been there when it's really packed and it's, it's too claustrophobic, too many people. So where was I going with that? Oh, that's why I went, I, so I went shopping Tuesday cause, uh, I needed to get my shopping done and it kept my mind off, off my dad's anniversary of his passing. It kept me, my mind off of all the sadness about Christmas Eve. And I got it done. I stayed out until I got it done. And that was so funny. I It was like 4 o'clock and I'm like, oh, cool. My husband gets home around 4. I'm thinking this is great. I'm going to go home and make dinner. And then I realized I have to get groceries yet. So I didn't get home till like 6 o'clock. And anyway, it was the longest day. But I was like, I'm staying out till it's done. It has to be done. <laughs> so that's my life update. Good or bad, whatever. It is what it is, right? And I was moving on to, I don't even know now, what was I talking about? Hauls, yes. Oh, so while I was out shopping, that's what got me back. <laughs> so while I was out shopping, I was at Walmart, and whenever I'm at Walmart or going to Joanne to get floss, I always look in the wood section or frame section, see if I can find anything cool. So I found some little goodies to put punch needle or cross stitch on, this little pallet wood looking thing. And then there's another one in the white, which I like the white. And this one here, I love the shape of this one. That's awesome. And then I love this, I, this is so cute. Little, um, like a little shutter. Looks like a little window shutter. And it's got this little tag on it. You can write something on that. So that would be really cute with punch needle or cross stitch. So I got those, that was part of my haul. Now, I have to tell you all, when I started watching Floss Tube, I binged watch all of Priscilla and Chelsea's. Love them, but I'm up to date with them now, which is awesome because then when they come out with their new one, I watch that and I'm done. Well, now I'm, I love the mother daughter Floss Tube. Floss Tubers, <laughs> they're my favorite. I love that. So now I just today finished binge watching Snug Harbor Crafts with Debbie and Kef. Now, when I say binge watch, it's not like I'm sitting there glued to the TV. I just have it playing while I'm working. Uh, like I was, I did a painting this morning and I had, had Deb and Kef kept me company while I did that. And I would rather listen to them chit chat and they're hilarious and it's so much fun. I'd rather do that than have on sitcoms or, you know, what a regular TV. God help me. No regular TV. So, so thank you ladies for entertaining me, but Deb, you're killing me with all these books. So I mentioned last week that I have this big cabinet over here full of children's books. But Deb talks about all these books that I've never heard of. And the stories are great. And I love that she, because if you go to a bookstore, you don't know if the story's good or not. And who has time to sit there and read all these books? So, she, so I, when I was out shopping, I did get, I wanted to get some classic, the classics, um, 
like Toys the Night Before Christmas, some of the Dr. Seuss books because you know I do have a grandbaby now and I got to read Green Eggs and Ham to her yesterday when she was here which I have three books up there I forgot to bring them down. Anyway so I got Green Eggs and Ham, Toys the Night Before Christmas and then I found this one which see I don't know if this is good but I did I did look at it a little bit in the uh, the bookstore and I love um, Julie Chen if I'm saying that right. Um, when I grow up I just I thumb through it and read a little bit and it sounds awesome for little kids and what they want to be when they grow up and then the rest of these oh no this one I bought too when I was at the bookstore the very hungry caterpillar I mean come on by Eric Carroll I mean you have to have that in your stash of children's books they're the classics but this here and I have more coming Oh gosh, um, Deb has reignited my passion for children's books. I hadn't bought in it any for quite a while. Having a grandbaby is a big part of it, but also it's mostly Deb. <laughs> so I'm going broke here. But anyway, she was talking about all these. So I got The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors, uh, After the Fall, Humpty Dumpty, The Day the Crayons Quit, Sounds adorable. The Wonky Donkey I just got because it was very inexpensive and I love the name of it and I love that little donkey. He's so stinking cute. And then The War That Saved My Life. This isn't a children's book, but she explained what it was about and it sounds amazing, so I can't wait to read that. So there you go, that's my haul. That is my haul. I have well, I'm going to wait to the end to do this. I just don't want to forget. Oh, no, I have another one. This is nothing to do with cross stitch and punch needle. However, it's very creative, and I just have to share it. When my friend was here from Nashville, a group of, there's a group of us that get together. We all met in, like, middle school. One of them I met in kindergarten. We've been friends all these years. And when Kristen comes up, we all spend like five days together and we stay the night at Jill's like a big slumber party for five days I mean she comes twice a year it is the best thing on the planet it talk about some serious girl time it is awesome and we do things and you know go to the movies and we go to wineries or you know we always have a blast well Jill made arrangements for us to go to the painted pot in Rochester Michigan and I know that they have these type of things I don't think that's a chain it might be a chain but they have different ones around. So hopefully they have them in your area because if they do, you have to do it. So wait, what it is, is you go into this, this is the cutest little building and they have pre-made pottery, just stacks, I mean, all over the place. There's mugs and there's bowls, there's um, little houses, there's spoon rests. I mean, you anything you can think of that could be made, casserole dishes, um, platters, anything. It's already made, and so what you do then is you paint it or glaze it. You can pick out stencils. They have stamps. I mean, any any kind of design you can think of, they they have. And so I did this little bowl, and oh, it says joy, and it's got and it matches my house perfectly. It's kind of primitive. I love the way the glaze turned out on the outside, and then I put a black rim on it. And then Joy is in black. I just love the way it turned out. So I wanted to bring that up because I, I just got this from Joe when I saw her when we all met Friday for dinner. But I wanted to bring that up because if you get a chance to go do something like that, you got to do it. Mother, daughters, um, friends, take your kids. Oh my gosh, when Ellery gets bigger, I am so taking her to do that. So I wanted to show you that. Okay, next. What else do we have? Oh, okay. I, you know, I mentioned I have like over 4,000 images, paintings, and it's true. It's like, I forget, 4,300, something like that. Mostly watercolor because that was a huge part of my career. I've been painting for over 20 years for my business. And, you know, I've done so many projects with so many different companies you know there was a time there was a period of probably 10 to 12 years where it was like a painting factory down here i mean it was just pumping out paintings after paintings because i had deadlines for my licensees and it was just ah, oh, it was crazy 
I completely forgot about some of the artwork that I had. Now, when I would design something for a company, I would just do a small little sketch in my sketchbook. Then I would, once you know the sketch was approved or I got it the way I wanted it, I would enlarge it with my copy machine. And then I would redraw it on graph paper. Let me just show you. I don't know if you can see it, but the, the paper that has the lines in it, that way I knew my lines would be straight and it was easy to measure the inches that way and I could, anyways, it was the best way to do it for me. Then I would use a light box and I would put my watercolor paper over top, tape it to it, and then draw it lightly on my watercolor paper. So I have tons of these drawings. Well, I was I wanted to chart flying lessons because remember that was the winner. Everybody chose that to be charted next. Well, I want to do it a little bit more primitive. I don't want all tons of shadowing and, and things like I did for Halloween March. So I thought, well, I you know, I kind of actually forgot. Man, I need to go and look in my cupboard over here where I have all the rubber stamps from when we did that with punch needle because I have all these files in there as well of all these drawings. So I was gonna look for the drawing for flying lessons. I pull out all of these drawings and I was just like, I forgot about half of this stuff. I mean, is nuts. When I was looking through there, I found something, a treasure that I forgot, completely forgot that I even created. It was with a company, I was licensed with this company called Books Are Fun, and I had an idea for a story. It would have been an awesome book. I did the cover illustration for the book. I wrote the story. It never happened. They made products from the story, but they didn't make the actual book. But I'm revisiting it now because when I pulled this out, I was like, are you kidding me? I forgot all about it. It's called the Blessing Star. Now this is just color copies because I do not think I have the original because it's a, it's a long story, but I think it got destroyed because the company sold and they still had some of my originals and I didn't get them all back. Anyway, it's a story. Oh my gosh, I just love this. I don't know if you can see it. But it's snowmen. You can see Santa up there with stars coming off. And each of the snowmen are holding stars. And the stars have people's names on them. Anyway, basically the story, in a nutshell, Izzy the snowman is super busy at Christmas time. Izzy's busy. <laughs> and he keeps turning down all these invitations from friends and family to do holiday things you know, Christmas, let's go get a tree together. Let's go see, let's go Christmas caroling. Let's do all these things, you know, different people he'd run into in town and, and ask him and invite him to different things. And he would turn it down. I got too much to do. I got too much to do. So he gets visited by somebody at night and I'm not going to give away too much detail because this thing is not written completely yet. And I don't want to give my idea away, but, um, and it basically has to do with this blessing star. And there's a really good moral to the story at the end. And I know how important that is in books for children. It doesn't have to be that way, but anyway. So I, when I saw the, the oh, here's some little mock-ups too of the individual snowmen. And so when I did, oh, I thought I had three. Anyway, when I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder where that story's at. And I'm thinking, oh my Lord, to find that on my computer, number one, is not going to happen because the computer that that was typed on and saved on is long gone. Anyway, I went back through my emails and what is the date on it? Oh my Lord, you guys. February 6, 2007. <laughs> Are we talking what? Eight? No. 2007, 11 years ago. I wrote this story 11 years ago. Anyway, I'm going to revisit it and I'm going to see if I, because I, now you can self-publish, you can do things like that. So I'm revisiting it and we're going to see what happens. I just had to share that with you because we were talking about children's books 
We were talking about creating a story for flying lessons. And when I come upon that, I was just like, this is so meant to be. This is so meant to be. So doing it. All right, last thing for the needle art. I have a gift for you all because you all have been so welcoming and so kind and I love your comments. I Like I said, I read them all. I'm just, I love it. I love this community. You know, I, I knew I would love this community because I love the shop owners. Kevin and I, we've been in business forever. I mean, forever, but not necessarily in this market. But when we started doing the Nashville show, the store owners are the best people on the planet. They're so much fun. They're so kind. They're exhausted when they're at the show, but they you they are pleasant and fun and laughing and have so such a good time. I enjoy this market so much. So I knew Floss Tube would be amazing as well because it's just a stitching thing, I think. It's just a needle arts thing. But y'all are great. I love you. So I wanted to give you a Christmas present. And this is my Christmas present. It's a free chart that I designed for you in mind this week. It's called Hold Closely the Ones You Love. And oh, I hope I see it stitched by someone. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. And there's going to be a link in the description box. So it's this little... I wanted to do something snow because you know it, winter is upon us but i love that it's a bunny because it kind of brings you into spring and the little bunny is getting a big old squeeze from this adorable snowman and so the colors are you know like pinks and greens and a little bit of blue here's the floss colors are mm, let me see i think they're mostly dmc yeah, they're mostly DMC. Let's see. One, two, three. Three weeks dye works, but all the rest are DMC. And you, but you can obviously, as you know, and as I see y'all do, you pick your own colors, whatever you like. Pick y'all colors. Anyway, I'm so excited <laughs> to give you guys this. Uh, what I want you to do, if you could, if you do end up stitching this, if you could please show your progress on wh wherever you're at, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, if you could please, it's going to be called, what did I decide? I want it to be uh, hashtag the ones you love, S-A-L for stitch along. How about if we do that? Because I want to see, I want to see it stitched because y'all know I'm not a cross stitcher. So I will probably never have this stitched for myself. But I want to see what it looks like because it's really difficult. The, the hardest part for me being a cross-stitch designer and not actually being the person that stitches it is because when I send it out, it, it, it looks so much different stitched than when you just are holding the floss colors next to each other. If I were stitching something and I didn't like it, I would pull it out and switch a color, but I don't have that luxury because I'm not the one stitching the model. So I'm just curious to see how it turns out. But anyway, so that's my Merry Christmas gift to you. Remember, it's hashtag the ones you love SAL. I will be looking for that on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever social media you're on. I would love to see it. That's all I have. Oh crap, that's not all I have. But you know what? This is running too long. I, I have this thing that I'm going to start doing, but this one ran way too long. This is what they call it Chinese fortune teller. I don't know if kids still do this, but when I was a little girl, this was huge in elementary school. I don't know that we did this in middle school, but probably did. But anyway, I devised a way that I could do this with y'all. I Obviously, you're supposed to interact with people and they pick a color and then you spell the color and then they pick a number and then you do it that many times. I can't do that. So I have random.org. We'll pick one through four, and then that will be the one I open. Oh, it starts out with color. And the, the color, basically, I, whatever painting I did last, whatever the main color of that painting is, that's the color I'm going to do. So let's say it's red. So I go R, E, D. And then I do random.org, one through four. It picks a number for me. And then I go, let's say it picks three. One, two, three. And then I do random.org again, pick a number, and that's the one I open. 
So the topics are pet peeves. I'm, I'm going too long today, so that's why I'm not going to do it today, but we will start this next week. Another one is my favorite, and then I'm going to have a pile of um, papers that say different things like your favorite color, your favorite movie, your favorite book, whatever, favorite music, and, and I'll draw one of those, and that's what I'll answer. Um, scary moments. Ugh. Bucket list. A recipe. And I'm also going to do a drawing. I'm going to have a bunch of recipes in a hat or whatever. And I'm going to pull a recipe. Goals and plans. Tell a funny personal story. Tell a funny business story. And that's it. Because I don't have anyone here to interact with. And I thought this would be a really fun way to just different topics and different things that I wouldn't normally think to talk about. So I think that's going to be a really fun addition to my floss tube channel. But that's But that's all I have for that part of my business. I'm going to move on now to my artsy fartsy side of my business. I painted this today. I gotta get, there we go. Just getting prepared for the Atlanta show. I could see this as a blossom bucket figurine. Could you not? Wouldn't that be cute? That was one of my paintings. Also, I, I'm refilming Angelic Strokes tutorial. If anyone has taken that, you, the, the current one that's there will always be there, but I am refilming it because, let me tell you why, I painted the original one with craft paints. I wanted to do that so that you could just go to the store, get the paint, and not have to worry about mixing paints. And it would just be easier, I thought, for everyone to learn that way. Well, what has happened is some of the paints are discontinued now. I never dreamed that would happen. I'm trying to think how long ago I even did that, that tutorial, but it's been over two years. It's probably been three years ago that that came out. And they've discontinued, discontinued some of the paint colors and people are having a hard time finding paints. So I'm refilming it using golden paints but it's um colors that are available in all different brands you don't have to get golden paints but it's like burnt sienna raw umber yellow ochre it's all these colors that are standard colors and i'm and i'm teaching you how to mix the colors that you need for flesh tones and things like that which actually is way more valuable so i'm in the process of doing that i've gotten the canvas covered with i almost said wallpaper with scrapbook paper and I have our angel drawn on there. And that is my job tomorrow, is to record uh, the painting of angelic strokes. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow. Ooh. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. I really didn't get much done on the big coastal angels. I did, I did put two layers of the matte varnish on each of these huge huge um, canvases to protect the papers and then I also got the, um, the angels printed off so here's one this was originally going to be this narrow but she changed her the size that she wanted it and I'll just continue the drawing off on the side there's one of them and then I printed off the other one too and then here's the second angel as you can see, they're holding shells and starfish, and then there's going to be the ocean down here. And that, that's my project. I want to get it done between Christmas and New Year's. Huh? We'll see. As you can see, it takes me a lot just to get as far as I have. <laughs> it's not very far, so that's my goal. And that's it for my art business.
that's it for this week. I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. I, um, Christmas Day, we, uh, the boys will be here. Um, Kyle and Ryan will be here. And we'll open gifts. And Athena will open her gifts. And then we have a big breakfast. And then we leave around three to drive about hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes to his brother's house, my husband's brother's house. And that's where all the wonderful, crazy Colgate's go <laughs> for Christmas. All of the ones that were here at Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's like 30, almost 40 people. And it is awesome. It's so fun. And we eat and we're, this year we're doing that. We, well, we did gifts years ago, but it just got to be too much because the family is so huge now. And then we would draw names and you just bought one gift and then we quit doing that and now we're back to buying a gift, but it's, what do you call that? Will you swap, you know, you either can pick out of the pile or you can take someone's gift. Mississippi swap. I don't know what it's called, but anyway, that's what we're doing. And this will be so much fun because this family is awesome and they're just a lot of fun. So I can't wait for that. Please enjoy your families. It's going to be very difficult. This is the first year I will be without my mother for Christmas. So Christmas Eve, I'm glad my husband's going to keep me busy because I'd probably be crying. <laughs> I'm 52 for crying out loud. But, you know, I love Christmas traditions and I love my family. And it's so hard to not be with my mom and Kyle and Bree and Eric. and I. But anyway, I'll see everyone the next day and um except for my mom but we are going to see her in january we're flying down there but anyway anyway again merry christmas and have a great new year actually i can wish you happy new year next week because i am doing a video next week too so thanks everyone so much for being here till next time bye now